Hi, I'm Sarah L, and welcome to Boating New Zealand. It's been an action-packed summer, so let's have a look at what's been going on with the latest in news and reviews. We're here today at Gulf Harbour to check out this new Benetau Oceanus 40.1. It's a first line model, which means it has a slight performance edge, which is natural, seeing as the owner is an ex-airline pilot. The Oceanus 40.1 was named 2021's best monohull cruising boat under 50 feet by Sail Magazine and was praised for its combination of cruising comforts and sailing performance. The naval architecture is by French luxury yacht designer Marc Lombard and is in keeping with the philosophy of Benetou's long-standing first range which adds a performance edge to cruising yachts. The hull has a pronounced chine running its entire length, lower down towards the bow then rising up towards the wide transom. The boat has twin rudders, which make for very steady and responsive steering, and the wide stern and chines keep the angle of heel comfortable, even when the wind rises a little. Owner Mark Taylor, who retired in 2020 after a career captaining Boeing 777s around the world, chose the first line model because of its taller mast, deeper draft and performance oriented boom and deck gear package. He also had a custom set of sails made by Roger Hall of North Sails in the Bay of Islands, a main, jib and jenica with a code zero next on the list. The two-step electric boarding platform folds down out of the transom with a telescoping swimming ladder. While the day of our shoot it was in its original factory livery, the boat is soon to have a bit of a facelift thanks to the application of a dark grey metallic vinyl wrap and sign writing bearing its name, Skyfall. One of the first things you notice is how open and uncluttered everything is. The large cockpit is free of lines and provides plenty of space for relaxing and entertaining. The twin carbon nautical wheels add a racy touch and are set right aft. There are no sheets and lines in the cockpit at all. The main sheet runs to a bridle on the low profile cabin top and the German continuous main sheet system runs along the cockpit combings to winches by the steering wheels. Three of the four winches are two-speed Harkin electric and the mainsail folds down into a stack pack on the boom. Down below, there's a lot of space for a 12 metre boat thanks to its high topsides and 4.18 acceleration, which maximises cabin space. There are a pair of quarter berths aft with decent headroom and hanging lockers and the starboard cabin is semi en suite with a large head and shower compartment. In the bow double cabin is the optional extra of a small sink with a fold-out tap inside a cabinet. The saloon layout is not your typical Kiwi configuration. The galley is C-shaped and forward on the starboard side, with a two-burner stove, large chiller, double sink and plenty of storage. Facing the galley is a U-shaped saloon seating area with a small nav station aft at the base of the curved steps. Heading out of the marina for a sail, Skyfall comes onto the wind easily and sits steadily in the groove. With a bit of puff on, she settles comfortably with minimal heel. The twin rudder setup providing steering that feels both responsive and secure. The bearaway is smooth and you get the feeling that she's keen to get up and go with a bit more breeze. Skyfall is Taylor's first yacht and he's had great pleasure in bringing his long-held dream to fruition. He might have retired from his life in the sky, but there's no doubt plenty more exciting adventures await on the water. John Ackleson from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel.
Roger Mills for Boating New Zealand magazine. The subject of today's video is the Saska Menorcan 34 HT. Occasionally you see a boat that makes a memorable impression, as was the case with Ernest Henshaw a few years ago in the Mediterranean. Motoring to windward in big seas and high winds off the west coast of Sardinia in their Swan 53, finding the ride laborious, another vessel appeared off their port beam making what looked like double their eight knots. Surprisingly, and very memorably for Ernest, it was handling the conditions with aplomb, as sure and steady in the nasty short seas as a substantial keeler, unlike any 54 motorboat Ernest had ever seen. That motor yacht was a Menorcan 54. A few days later in the next marina, Ernest pulled into a berth alongside a smaller Menorcan 39, and after the owner helped him safely tie up, he invited the Henshaws aboard to have a look. Impressed with the build quality, and the obvious sea keeping ability of the design, Ernest decided to find out more about Saska yachts and the Menorcan range of boats. With the sailing adventures in the Mediterranean completed, future boating would be based in the Marlborough Sounds, where they have a property with water access only. Having owned two high powered sport fishing design cruisers over the previous 20 years, now was the time to change. Ernest started looking for a second hand Menorcan in Spain, but couldn't find one in the condition he wanted so decided he would buy a new one. Those discussions led him to taking the agency for Saska Yachts in New Zealand. Bruce McGill, who was with Riviera New Zealand for over 20 years, came in as a partner in the company called European Marine Imports Limited. Saska Yachts are based in Menorca, one of the Balearic Islands off the coast of Spain. The original design of the Saska Menorcan range was informed by the island's traditional fishing boats known as louts. Developed over centuries, these traditional fishing boats are famous for handling the Mediterranean's short, sharp seas. Having operated for four decades, the design has been modernised to incorporate the best new developments in production moulding, hull optimisation and technology. The Menorcan 34 is the first model to arrive in New Zealand, Ernest's own boat. Our boat test was undertaken out of Waikawa Marina in Queen Charlotte Sound in perfect weather. Great for getting pictures of the boat in picturesque bays, but not ideal for testing her heavy weather handling characteristics. However, Ernest had an opportunity to test this aspect of the boat's handling during his crossings of Cook Strait from Mana Marina near Wellington to the boat's new home in Waikawa. Since I was down near Wellington for my family Christmas on the day Ernest left Mana, I was lucky to get a picture of the boat motoring out past Mana Island in heavy white caps. Ernest's email report of the trip it had been blowing 50 plus knots northwest Monday and Tuesday and was still 24 gusting 29 at the Brothers as we crossed the strait. Add to that a mid-tide current running north and we had a pretty interesting sea state. For 34 feet, it's an amazing little boat. We held 9 knots all the way to Tory, except occasionally when coming off a wave and seeing 13 to 14 knots. This was a good first up run for the boat, testing it in the harshest conditions it's likely to encounter. Arriving at the marina, the boat stood out with her unique style, rounded transom corners and the duckboard extending out like a lip. It looks integrated with the hull. High topsides provides a generous bulwark and safety rail, making walking around the side deck very secure. Wide teak cap rails give it a solid feel and quality appearance. The rear deck has teak flooring and curved cockpit seats. A small rear door to starboard gives access to the duckboard. The size of the rear deck is generous and it is mostly covered by the extended cabin top which has a lovely varnished teak lining providing good shade for anyone relaxing outside. The boat carries its beam well forward at deck level giving generous foredeck space and good access to the anchor winch. The Lofrans anchor winch is situated beside a timber figurehead post. This is a nod to the fishing design heritage of the boats along with a timber light post on the cabin top. Integrated seats built into the stem rail are a nice touch, providing a comfortable resting place forward. Moving inside from the rear deck through teak doors, the boat opens up to a generous main saloon, galley and helm station on the port side. The saloon table can be lowered and covered with a squab to form an extra berth. The galley to port has a two burner gas hob, isotherm electric fridge with ice box and the usual cupboard and drawer storage. The floor is teak and holly, with furniture and trim finished in white oak decape, 
Headroom is a very generous 1.96 metres and a pair of overhead hatches above the helm let in more light as well as fresh air. They are furnished with sunscreen covers. Two comfortable cabins and a head with a shower are accessed via companionway steps forward. In the bow, there's a generous double cabin with hanging lockers on both sides, hull windows, cabin ports and an overhead hatch. Plenty of options for ventilation and light. The wide beam forward is evident here with great access around the side of the bed. Again, the tall hull provides generous headroom here as well. To starboard are two berths tucked in under the main saloon across the hull. The timber wall panelling is light in colour and together with the recessed lights provides a nice ambience. Storage lockers include a hanging locker and there's a useful bench located along one side. There is headroom enough to stand and comfortably dress in the entry to the guest cabin, but sitting room only on the beds. An electric toilet, vanity and shower are located to port in a well finished single enclosure that makes maximum use of the space available. The helm station is on the port side, forward of the galley. It enjoys good visibility through all round windows and aft through the cabin's folding rear doors. A Raymarine 12 inch MFD takes pride of place in the centre of the instrument panel. Engine revs, temperature and oil pressure are displayed by analogue dials on either side. Twin throttle controls fall readily to hand above and to port of the nice timber steering wheel. To port of the panel is a zip weight trim tab control along with the bow thruster and VHF radio below. The hard top supports the radar, AIS and VHF aerials. This vessel is well equipped for gloomy days with poor visibility. The Menorcan 34 is a quiet performer. With little fanfare it accelerates smoothly to an easy 9 knot displacement speed. Steering is light and responsive from the twin rudders. Twin Volvo Penta 270 horsepower diesels deliver the power via V drives, pushing her along quietly. A good cruising speed is around 16 knots. When the throttles are opened and she accelerates briskly at 3,500 RPM and getting maximum thrust from her four bladed props, the vessel happily sits a touch over 23 knots. There's plenty of power on hand to push her through adverse conditions. Access to the engines is through hatches in the cockpit sole. One smaller one for maintenance checks and a larger one should more serious maintenance be required. Fuel capacity is 650 litres, stored in fuel tanks either side of the engine bay. After getting our drone shot zooming around Ruakaka Bay, we quickly motored a few miles around to the Bay of Many Coves Resort for lunch. Top quality food and service was provided, along with great views from the quarterdeck of the Menorcan quietly resting in the bay on her mooring. The Menorcan 34 HT is an impressive boat for its size. It does all the things it needs to do well, has great build quality, good layout and accommodation, and excellent performance. I asked Ernest what sets this boat apart from the rest. His response? A boat with true integrity that was built for the sea state, not the fashion parade. I think it will appeal particularly to people like ourselves who have been sailors and are now into our 70s, don't want to pull up the mainsail anymore and want a slightly easier life. I think he could be right. A few more seasons pulling up the main for me and I might well be knocking on his door. John Ackleson for Boating New Zealand magazine. The subject of today's video is the Innovision 656 Explorer. So like the rest of the Innovision range, the 656 Explorer's distinctive styling, which is really the result of function dictating form, is pretty hard to ignore. It certainly gets people's attention. Innovision's boats are defined by their plumb bows, but the bow shape is only part of what makes them perform so well. The boats were designed and jointly by Innovision and naval architect Brett Bakewell-White. I'm Simon Nofrio from Innovision Boats. 
Simon, these boats are really very, very distinctive. They're, they're quite different from the usual run of alloy boats in New Zealand. What was the inspiration? Uh, so I came across a, a Wally boat in Europe 12, 13, 14 years ago. Um, then it had the very distinct plum bow. Um, it was carbon fibre, 40 foot, and some of them had jet turbines in them, 50 right. knot plus sort of boats. Um, I had the luck enough to go for a run and was very impressed by its performance. And then, yeah, had a light bulb moment of the, ah, oh, this would, you know, fix a tin boat. Yeah, gave it a go 10 years ago and and found out there was more to the hull design than just the plumb bow. It's very important to the design and setting up the entry, but you've got to back up the rest of the, the plumb bow with a package up the back, which, which helps the hull dynamic of the hull work. Right. Effectively, mm -hmm. without compromising too many things. So, so it wasn't an instant success. You had a, you had a bit of work, a bit uh, of The first hole was actually really good. Yep. Second one was a half a step back. From there, it was progressively stepping forwards. We kind of learned a, a quick lesson on the second one, um, and then uh, we really understood the dynamic of the back half of the boat and really how you, the chine angle, the chine shape, um, and the dead rises from the back to front and where they needed to be to to actually make sure the, the, the performance was good in all angles. Um, it was one of the worst angles is at the cross beam. Um, yes. And as you saw today, we're out there in 15, 16 sort of knots of a half metre, maybe three quarters of a metre chop and it had no banging at no all. No banging at all. No, and yeah, no. I was and, driving and, and, it like I stole it. <laughs> so Simon, if you were to sum it up, you know, what, what would you say set your boats apart from uh, the general run of, of you know, production aluminium boats in New Zealand? The big thing is we built to order, so we customise. Mm -hmm. We can customise certain features like the transom design and the seating options. We can uh, change roof heights to suit the, the taller gentleman, um, seat positions, um, to give a bit more space at the helm. Um, right. So we do a lot more... Flexible yeah, and, yeah flexible and, we, and more interactive with the client. Um, but in terms of performance and handling, what sets these boats apart? What sets this boat apart, this particular boat? This, this six and a half um, from the performance, performance side of things, you know, compare it to a far bigger boat and a heavier boat of other brands, you know, other manufacturers mm. brands. Just because of the plumb bow, the dynamic of the hull, you just don't get that extreme amount of lift in the front of the bow um, on the other boats. Um, one of the big things is I've tried in getting these boats airborne, um, they don't lift their bow up and come land on their tail and slap down. They actually lift really level right. and, then they, and then they kiss back down on the water the whole hole, yes. which is great if you like to send it everywhere at, at 30 plus knots. Yeah, the um, dynamic of the hull also, the, the way it's shaped from the back to the front because you're really low planes, planing speed, so you can plane it down at 10, 12 knots with the bow, the boat quite level. So if you are in, caught out in some seriously you know, shitty conditions and you can actually back it off to 12, 13 knots, 14 and have the bow down so you, and have it have doing the works, so you're not copping or hiding and it's more efficient as well. And I guess the other great advantage of this this style of boat with this type of bow, bow profile is the, the amount of interior volume that you, you get. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as as with every Innovision boat that I've been aboard, this one feels a lot bigger than its nominal mm. uh, nominal length. Yeah. You know, it's called it a, a 656 I believe and you know, it feels more like a seven and a half metre boat or bigger. Yeah, no, that's just basically with the plumb bow. It's just giving you that extra, probably got an extra three quarters of a metre of bunk space in the front. This boat, riding on a brake to tandem axle custom aluminium trailer, will be based in Matapori, Northland. It's extremely well equipped, including a cockpit road cover. Innovision Simon Monoprio measures his boats from the transom platform to the bowsprit, the true length of the boat, but does not include the engine. In this case, a Honda 225 horsepower. So while the boat is only a little over 6.5 meters long, from the inside it feels much bigger. The hardtop features a steeply raked windscreen. It's spacious enough without being huge, and upright sides mean there's plenty of shoulder room inside. Seating comprises a pair of upholstered aft-facing seats that fold up to give more cockpit space, and there's a bit of storage under the seat bases as well. Plus a pair of super comfortable shark suspension seats with custom upholstered bolsters. The diamond stitching detailing is a nice touch. Raymarine electronics include an autopilot, a 16 inch hybrid touch MFD and a Ray 50 VHF radio. Called La Belle Rose, this boat is game rigged with ocean blue outrigger bases and poles along with six stainless steel rod holders each able to rotate for the perfect rod angle when trolling. There's a live bait tank under the port side transom walkthrough and a couple of transom tuna tubes. Uh, and I like the retractable reel tethers as well. Um, but beside the rod holes, they're a really nice touch. 
and of course the cage is the logical place to fish from when things are calm. The 656 transom bait station is large and well laid out. There's a huge tackle drawer under the bait board, a transom locker houses the batteries, isolation switches and charger relay. Further forward, a couple of large underfloor lockers with removable PVC bins can be used as kill tanks or to store the catch. There's no need to have a chili bin on board which takes up deck space. Conditions for our review included some relatively flat water in the lee of Kawa Island and some rather more boisterous seas out wider where a 12 to 15 knot southerly breeze had built up a half metre of chop or so on top of the easterly swell. The Univision 656 rides like a much bigger boat. With its hull design giving an extra waterline length, it really is a bigger boat than most 6.5 meter models. This is reflected in the ride and handling, which also benefit from the boat's solid construction. The Univision's hull naturally travels with a level attitude and there's very little bow lift when transitioning onto the plane. The bow slices through the chop and wide chimes keep the boat dry. No matter what we did, it was almost impossible to get the hull to slam nor could we catch a chime. There's also no bow steer and the hull responds well to both engine trim and trim tab inputs. Upwind, trimming the bow down results in a very comfortable ride. Dry too. Holding the bow down with the trim tabs allows you to plane it just 10 to 12 knots. Useful should you get caught out in really nasty conditions. We were comfortable and dry running into the sea at 20 knots and running downwind at around 25 knots. Maximum speed in the flatter water was just a hair under 40 knots. The Honda 225 horsepower is pretty economical too. We used about 37 litres during our afternoon with the boat, which included a fair bit of thrashing around for the camera. So, whether you like how these boats look or not, they are well designed, well built, and perform like they are a whole size class larger. I think Simon and the team at Innovision Boats could be onto something. John Acklesome from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel. Hi there, I'm Norman Holtzhausen from Boating New Zealand, and today we're reviewing the Grand Turismo 41 from 36 Degree Brokers in Auckland. Streamlined and sporty, this latest iteration is also luxurious and spacious, surprisingly easy to handle, yet retains performance that should satisfy the most discerning owner. Visually the boat is stunning, with brilliant white gel coat and graphite black trim. The right combination of practical curves with angular edges to the windows and trim makes sure she stands out from the crowd. This model is a coupe style, with massive electrically operated sunroof and completely open rear cabin wall. As such, it is ideal for sunny days spent cruising around the islands, possibly swimming or fishing off the expansive swim platform. A sun deck with lounger and bimini style sunshade on the foredeck further adds to the sunny day appeal. However, it can also deal with more inclement weather. With that sunroof securely closed and the rear canopy zipped up, optional air conditioning can also either heat or cool the interior, allowing year-round use of the boat. The single full-width front window, combined with that wide open rear, provide unparalleled 360-degree visibility for the skipper and all passengers. Below decks, there is a generous owner's cabin forward, with a double berth mattress and panoramic windows either side. The guest cabin, located midships, has two single berths, although there's an option of another double berth instead. Panoramic windows provide a great view out, while between the cabins is a galley with gas hob, stainless sink with mixer tap, and an 80 litre fridge. Opposite the galley is a saloon with a four person sofa and table, with a sofa capable of conversion into another bunk. A spacious head, with a shower separated by a translucent door, provides the necessary amenities. The engine compartment in the stern is accessible through the upper deck and houses the twin Volvo D4 300 EVC E diesels, which power the stern drives, 
each with a counter-rotating duroprop. The entire teak-covered swim platform at the back can be lowered into the water with an electric actuator, which is perfect for younger swimmers or water sport enthusiasts to get in and out of the water, with a huge rear-facing sun lounger. This was my favourite place on the boat, lying there watching the Hauraki Gulf streaming behind us while someone else was at the helm. A mini galley with sink, fridge and ice maker means that appropriate refreshments can be kept right at hand. Which leads to the superbly equipped helm station. A double pilot seat plus an extra section provides luxurious seating for up to three people. The dash layout was uncluttered and superbly functional. A huge 12 inch Garmin display does duty as a chart plotter, fish finder and autopilot. Matching LCD displays either side provide the engine parameters and some simple switches control the accessories. Apart from the expected power steering and fly-by-wire throttle levers for the twin D4 300 motors, the boat also has a fantastic joystick docking system from Volvo. This enables the boat to be moved in any direction, including sideways or rotated, simply by twiddling the joystick. Humming along at 22 knots and using around 66 litres of fuel per hour in total. That equates to close to 3 litres of diesel per nautical mile, giving a working range of around 200 nautical miles at cruising speed after allowing for a 10% reserve. Of course, greater range can be achieved at a slightly lower speed, but 22 knots felt superbly comfortable. Turismo 41 had so far managed to keep her big secret, her air step hull. This patented Beneteau innovation introduces a flow of air between the wetted surface of the hull and the water, creating a cushion of air as well as forming runners to the rear of the hull. This reduces the amount of friction, producing claimed improvements in stability, safety and performance. Certainly we were impressed by the acceleration, giving almost speedboat type performance from a big vessel. Handling wise the hull was also an eye opener. You don't normally throw 8 ton boats into tight turns, but she handled it calmly and smoothly. Of course an open cabin boat is always going to allow some engine noise to intrude, especially when accelerating hard, but the sound of that controlled power from the twin diesels was a pleasure to listen to. It was never over intrusive and cell phone conversations in the cockpit were possible even at cruising speed. The Gran Turismo 41 undoubtedly lives up to its name, offering sportiness, superb handling, but also a very high level of luxury. It does not compromise on fuel efficiency. While achieving this, an important consideration in these times of rocketing fuel prices. John Ankelsheim from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel. Well, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed those stories, and if you want to read more, check out the latest edition of Boating New Zealand.